You ready to get rid of those tonsils, girly? Good morning, guys. All right, so it is surgery day. Avery, our three-year-old, is having her tonsils out and adenoids, and I wanted to kind of just walk you through the experience in case you've ever had, like your kid is ever going through this or you're going through this, and kind of like what the day and experience is all sort of like. It is coronavirus season pandemic life, so um, things are gonna be a little bit different. Only one of us are gonna be allowed to go back with her, um, so that totally stinks. But we are about to head out to the surgery center. She's having it at an outpatient surgery center that's right across from the hospital. So we're first case of the morning, so she, it's only like 5.30, would to be there at six. So hopefully things, um, I was glad we're first case because then she has to be NPO, which is like she can't eat or drink for less time. So I'm not gonna show a lot of her just to respect her privacy, but I will walk you through kind of like what the process is like so that you can kind of have an idea of what it's like or what to expect if you're ever in this situation. So here we go. I need to take a lot of deep breaths. I am. <laughs> I didn't sleep at all last night. I just laid there and imagined every worst case scenario. I mean, I feel like that's normal, right? Yeah. <sighs> but it's all gonna be fine. The floor that I used to work on as a nurse, we only ever saw worst case scenarios of tonsillectomies and we took care of them, so we're not gonna think about that. Everything's gonna go really well. <sighs> it's crazy to think like for her surgeon and the rest of the OR staff, like this is just Monday. And for me, it's a day I've been agonizing over forever. And I know in the grand scheme of things, it's just tonsils. Like, kids have so much more serious surgeries all the time. Anyway, here we go. You ready to get rid of those tonsils, girly? Yeah. <laughs> Tried to fit this surgical mask on her face and it was not happening. But they, it was really, really like, it was as best as it could be. You know, the nurse was super duper kind and nice and really good with her. Um, they were going to actually give her like the gas to fall asleep or at least not remember anything before they put the IV in. That was something I was really worried about was that they were gonna, I was gonna have to hold her down for an IV and like it was gonna be a whole thing, but she will be like asleep for it. And the way they took her back was super sweet. They told me, they were like, mom, do you want a popsicle? And they were like, and I was like, yeah. And they were like, Avery, will you come look for a popsicle with us? And that was when they took her back to the OR. So there was less like separation, anxiety, which was more like, oh, okay, like I'll go with you. So I feel like that went as good as it could. She had a really hard time like getting dressed on like getting into the gown and on like weight and all her vitals. Like she was just not having it, which I don't blame her. But um, yeah, it was hard not having Joe. She kept like crawling for him. Like she's like, I want daddy, like all this. So that was really hard, but it should only be about an hour until we get to, until um, surgery said should be about like 30, 45 minutes. Um, so probably like an hour and 15 minutes until we can go with like pre-op and post-op and stuff. So one of us will be allowed to go back when, and it'll probably be me when she wakes up. Um, and I'm anticipating that being interesting because kids this young are have a really hard time coming out of anesthesia, poor kids. So, but so far so good. Honestly, it's gone better than I, thought I was really worried about the IV thing, but they've been really, really good. So I feel like we got really lucky. Now I'm gonna go drink coffee in the lobby because there's a coffee machine, um, which is the exact opposite thing of what I need to do because my heart is like pounding. <laughs> so, wise choices. So she's all done. Now we just have to wait until she's like awake more to get to go back. It's 8.11 and she went back at 7. They took her at like 7.20. So that was only like 40 minutes. It was a long day. 
was really quick. So it went well. Um, now we just have to wait till we get to go back. So I'm assuming she's having a hard wake up. Because <laughs> it's been a while. And we're still waiting. So, yikes. It is now post-op day two, so it's been a minute. Uh, we didn't check in, I just actually went to work, so I took off yesterday, which was post-op day one. Joe took, my husband took off today, and then tomorrow my mom and my aunt are just gonna be home with her, so. They're all home with her today. It was three adults to one child, because Piper went to daycare, so hopefully that was fine. But I didn't get to update you yesterday, because yesterday was a really, really hard day, so I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything. <laughs> I know some of you might have kids that are like, getting ready for this, but I think it's helpful to kind of say how it's really been. So we'll just say how it's really been and it's been, it's been hard. This is also not helped by the fact that Avery is a, hold on, I'm gonna try to fix the lighting in here for us. You always hear like YouTubers complaining about um, like, oh, hang on, the lighting's bad. And I'm like, whenever I'm watching them, I'm like, I don't care if your lighting's bad, but then I do the same thing. I'm like, oh my gosh, wait, my lighting. And I'm not nearly as neurotic as most people. I should probably worry about that more. But anyway, there I was doing that. But um, yeah, I wanted to just kind of tell you what it was like. That way, if you ever have kids or any patients, like education around that, then you could provide it. But it has been a rough ride. I definitely, it's been harder than I definitely thought it would be. I don't know why. Like if you look in her mouth, it looks like she has two giant craters sitting like right back here, like just craters that are all like, they cauterize it off so they burn it off. Um, but yeah, so I thought I would catch you up real quick. So we went home from the hospital that first day. I think the last time I talked to you, we were in the car that day. It was okay. She had gotten some steroids while she was under anesthesia and steroids are gonna reduce inflammation. So I think that day she still had those in her system and we immediately started alternating ibuprofen and Tylenol. That was all the pain control that they had offered. When I worked inpatient as a peas nurse, we used to go oxycodone if they needed it. So I felt like the girl got a little gypped, but it's been somewhat working. That first day our pain control was not great. And even yesterday it was not good. Um, but I'm not sure that oxy would have, you know, anything stronger would have helped because our real problem was dehydration, but we'll talk about that. Um, so that first day it was okay. That day was definitely like, I thought it was bad, but I had not experienced the next day yet. So that day was really bad. Um, we were just trying to get her to drink a lot, offering her any, any, like we had so many different foods and drinks and all these things that she could have. And we'll talk about, I'll give you some ideas in just a second of like how to get them to drink anything. But I tried them all and it didn't work. I went into this like probably a little cocky. I was like, oh, like I, you know, like I was a peds nurse forever. I did TNAs like all the time, like not did them, but I took care of post-op TNAs all the time. And like I did fine and it wasn't fine. So that day, whatever, we made it through. And the next day, yesterday, post-op day one, um, well, we were up like all night. So I gave her medicine throughout the night, which I definitely recommend. I slept in her bed because she was coughing up uh, and gagging a lot on like phlegm that was getting, I'm assuming I'm just like caught in the back of her throat with the tonsils. So she was like, she wasn't throwing up. She was like spitting up and dry heaving all night and coughing. And I was waking her up every three hours to give her medicine. And it was just, it was not pleasant. So I'm sure, I mean, being tired probably led into the next day, but post-op day one, girlfriend decided she didn't want to drink anymore and one thing you really have to do is drink so drinking is going to oh, look fun tag <laughs> go hide uh drinking is going to let me just get myself situated just kidding what is this what are you doing here what are you doing here go away there 
It's probably hanging out all day in my patient's swear, looking at it like a handle. Anyway, drinking is going to coat the, like make sure your throat stays nice and lubricated. That way it can heal because things that are really dried out don't heal very well. That's why we like put ointment and everything on wounds so that they can just be happy and not dried out. And it's, if they're not really nice and moist, if they're dried out and cracked, you're gonna bleed more. So it reduces your bleeding risk. And then since it's not feeling dry, it actually hurts less. So hydration is queen here with tonsillectomies. And um, three-year-olds, uh, three-year-olds in general, are kind of hard to get you to do that, even if you're up with all your pain control. But most three, because they're like, no, this hurts. Why do I want to drink? Like, it seems so counterintuitive. So most three-year-olds, though, you can kind of, you'll find the thing, whatever it is that will eventually get them to let you do the beverage, whether they can pick the drink. Do you want to add chocolate? Do you want to make it chocolate milk? Do you want, Avery really just drinks water and milk. So I like had bought Sprite. Girls never had soda in her life. So I had brought Sprite. I had bought, you know, we were making chocolate milk. I had juice. She doesn't get juice. So she was getting that. So she had like the world. I was like, literally anything you want to drink. I had popsicles. We had yogurt. I had bought little shakes, like little protein shakes for kids like anything I thought she might like because I anticipated it might be a little hard wanted nothing to do with it I tried giving her crushed ice because sometimes they'll eat crushed ice especially if you put like um you can get like lemonade packets or something and sprinkle it on top I did Pedialyte packets on top and it makes it look like um little rocks like gemstones <laughs> like crushed ice and put the packet of flavoring beverage flavor any kind of those flavored water things on top of it Sometimes you can get kids to like eat it with a spoon like that and be like, oh, look at these magical unicorn rocks or whatever you want to call it. No dice. She did not want that. Didn't want popsicles. Didn't want regular ice cubes. Didn't want water in a cool cup. Didn't want um, <laughs> to get any like, didn't want to dr it, just nothing. What else did we try? I feel like we tried so many things. I tried putting, she would take medicine like better than she would take water. So I tried putting any kind of liquid I could think of into a syringe and telling her it was medicine and giving it to the doll baby. And then maybe we needed to like have her give it to her baby doll or teddy bear and then give it to herself, give it to Jeffrey. That was a no go. That's her lovey. I tried sticker charts. So I printed out a sticker thing and I said, you know, when you take a drink of water, we'll do this. And then I have a prize for you. I didn't have a prize, but I was like, I'll come up with it later. It turns out I didn't need to. I'm glad I didn't have one. Cause she didn't want to do a sticker chart for water drinks. I tried making it a game where she got to use the little like cup measuring cups for like medicine and did it like shots. Didn't want that. Didn't try to shot glass. Cause one of you on Instagram was like, I used shot glass with my son. And I was like, I'm going to try it. Didn't want that. Didn't want to have a tea party with it. Didn't want to have a competition like who can drink longer. Sometimes come kids would be like, you know, oh, let's do this and I'll drink. Finally, um, what I did eventually have to do was hold her down and use a medicine syringe and just hold her down and put it through. And that was just about as pleasant as it sounds. But I mean, at the she hadn't like peed in 12 hours. Like she was very dehydrated. Um, her throat was killing her because she was so dehydrated. So, um, I hated that she cried a lot and then I cried a lot later and it was just brutal. So that was a really hard and just a mess. Um, eventually she came around to it and realized like maybe she didn't like being force watered. Um, and my aunt would set a timer on her phone and every five minutes she and my aunt would drink and Avery got to turn the timer on and off and she really liked that. So we had tried that before the forced <laughs> water feeding and she was not into it then but afterwards that was her preferred method out of all of those so that's what we're still doing it is um it's been it's been a it's hard I mean I feel so bad for her it looks so painful and when you're three there's no way to understand you know you can't logic with a three-year-old an older kid you would be able to like be like hey like you know I feel like I feel like three-year-olds dig their heels in because they're three whereas like a five a, maybe even a four-year-old you could be like you don't want to just eat ice cream all day because that's been like, I thought she would be excited just to eat pudding and ice cream and all these other things we have for her. Um, oatmeal, yogurt, you know, like all of her favorite food. But she, she wasn't, when she realized we really wanted her to, like she didn't want to and she's sore. So that's been that. But those are some ideas, some food ideas, some beverage ideas um, going forward. Food in general, just like soft, super duper soft, mac and cheese, oatmeal, yogurt, applesauce, pudding, ice cream, milkshakes, smoothies, um, whatever, whatever they want and um, nothing like hard kind of usually for a week is what they usually say and kind of just like activity is tolerated so she has mostly wanted to do nothing puzzles have been good because we can do those while we're sitting watched a lot of doc mcstuffins but that is where we are with that this is a really long update holy cow but um yeah 
I'm hoping that it gets better. I went back to work today and that was really hard because I didn't want to leave her. I was like, I don't want to, ah, I just hated it. But I was like, Joe's, my husband's home with her and my mom and my aunt, all of them with just her. So, and they said she did pretty good. So that's where we are with that kind of in this experience. Um, yeah. If any of you ever have any questions about TNAs or anything, you can leave them down below and I will happily answer them. But it's been honestly a little bit of a harder experience than I was, I don't know, like I said, I thought like I would be able to just like, she would listen to me, my bad. Also Avery, did I already say this is very strong-willed? Like very strong-willed. So if you had maybe a child that was less so, like Avery digs her heels in to dig them in, like there doesn't need to be a purpose, <laughs> but not every kid's gonna be like that. So this is not everyone. I don't want anyone to panic. And this is just like our experience. This will likely not be yours. I've had a lot of people who were like, oh yeah, my kids loved like, as soon as I brought out the ice chips, they were like, I'm all about it. And like Avery threw them across the living room. So I was like, okay. <laughs> I think some of this has to do with our temperament. That's where we are. We'll see how post up day three goes. I hope better. Joe's going back to work too. So it's just my mom and my aunt. And then the next day they go home and we're on our own with her. So yikes. And then I go to work on Saturday and Joe's all by himself. Everyone cross your fingers for Saturday. Saturday might be the day that the scabs fall off and that's gonna be really rough. I haven't told him that yet. <laughs> He's like, she'll feel better by Saturday yet, right? I'm like, uh, uh, everything's gonna be fine. You're gonna do great. Just got home. I was informed that post-op day two today <gasps> is much better, much worse, worse than yesterday. So I guess I took, picked a good day to be the one that I went, stayed home. Just kidding, I wish I was home, but it's okay. It's all gonna be okay, she's gonna get better. She needs to drink, the girl won't drink. The girl won't drink. Post up day three, things are improving. She took a three hour nap while I was at work and has she hasn't really eaten anything, but she's had a little bit to drink. She's just in a much better spirits place. So post up day three. How are you feeling, Eve? Piper's learned to walk with this walker. Oh, what's happening here? We're feeling well enough to be bossy, so. Things are improving. How are you feeling today, Avery? Super fantastic this afternoon. Why, thank you, that was very articulate. Thank you, <laughs> oh my God. What are you thinking about walking? She just took off with the walker the other day, just like stood up and went. I was like, oh, okay, new skill. but the end is in sight. If you have children doing this or your patients, just warn them. It's a little rougher than you would think it would be, but they will get through it. You will get through it. You will one day sleep, that's what I tell myself. It's been a really good, um, remember, eye opener for all my hormones that are like, just one more baby, one more baby. And then I've been up with her every three hours all night and sleeping in her room and getting no sleep. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. Tonsillectomy, excellent birth control. In case that IUD fails. Don't fail. Do not fail me now. You got some mail, Abe. Some people sent you some mail. Are you excited too? Oh, what's on that card? Look, these are stickers. They're mini stickers. Oh, stay seated. That says just a little note. And then you can open it. Hi Avery, best wishes with your surgery. Hope you enjoy your stickers. That one's from Autumn. And it says, sit, stay, heal. Dear Avery, get well soon. Love Teresa, moonshine and sunshine. <gasps> what is that? Thank you. Oh, thank you everyone for sending her goodies. Those are Avery stickers, Pipey, because she had her tonsils yanked out of her head. Actually, I think they were burned off, but technicalities. Thank you for people who sent um, some goodies to Avery. It, do you like them? She's nodding. <laughs> that was really sweet. She is, let's see, what are we? We're post-op day four, one, two, three, four. It's been hit or miss today, but not nearly as bad as day one, two, and I think three maybe and were. Not because they were throat either. Yeah, and my mom and my aunt left today, so she's been, it's been sad, huh? We miss them when they leave. But we're drinking a little bit more. We're obviously feeling well enough to have a donut here. That's sliding right down, no problems. Right, things are deteriorating, so I will wrap this up in a, in a few minutes. Post-op day six, rough. I don't know if this is the day we're losing our scabs. She will not let me look in her mouth. She won't eat because she just like everything she tries to eat, she tries to swallow and it comes back up. So I'm assuming um, 
that things are really swollen and maybe everything is scabbing off and coming off but girly is not happy today poor thing she just seems absolutely miserable so there's our update i am gonna i put a couple questions up on uh post up on instagram and ask like what questions you guys have so i am going to recap this whole video real quick with some frequently asked questions about like tonsillectomies because i've i like i said i'm an expert now because i've my child has had one <laughs> so here i am but i'll try to share whatever info i have with you and i couldn't remember if i said earlier <laughs> oh my we're being joined <laughs> hi Okay, I wanted to kind of wrap this video up um, and let you know where we are. I thought by a week out, so today's a week out, it's Monday, so she had surgery a week ago. I thought we would be done, <laughs> but, and we could have a nice conclusion where I'm like, there you go, this is the experience. Let's wrap it up with a nice bow. That has not been our experience. We are still on the struggle bus over here, but and maybe at the end of the week, by the time this goes up, I'll be able to put like a blurb at the very end and let you know when she actually started to feel better. Uh, because we're still, it's still really rough. I, um, she still doesn't really want to drink a lot. She is definitely dehydrated. We have been pushing fluids however we can. She doesn't like really want to eat as much. That doesn't worry me nearly as much as the fact that she, what are you eating? A receipt? Cool. <laughs> um, doesn't want to drink. She's still really uncomfortable, especially at night. None of us are sleeping because she's just up like screaming and really upset at night. So I talk, oh, I know everyone's grumpy because <laughs> no one's sleeping. I know. I'm grumpy too. Um, so yeah, I called her surgeon this morning and talked with a nurse and they said that this could be normal because I was like trying to see if I could get like, I don't know, Tylenol coating or something for the girl for like at night because I'm like, this is just like insanity. And she said basically no, but that he would call me later. So I'm waiting for him to, the surgeon to call me back. Um, she was like, yeah, we don't really do that anymore, which is crazy because like I said, when I was a nurse, we gave kids like the good stuff and then I feel like that puts you in a better place to be able to drink, which then makes you feel better. And she's obviously not drinking and we're maxed out on Tylenol and Motrin. And I feel like we shouldn't be doing Tylenol and Motrin every three hours for an entire week, but we still are. And that's where we are. And they said, she said some kids like just have a really hard time with it and it's really, really sore. I mean, it looks horrible. <laughs> if you look in her mouth, it looks like craters that are like, well, black and yellow and ugh. So I don't know if it's scabbed and fallen off because she did have a couple days where she didn't want to swallow. So I don't know if that was that or if they're just, I mean, they look horrifyingly painful. So right now I'm like, what were we even thinking? I know it'll be good. She doesn't snore anymore when she sleeps. She breathes through her nose now, which is all. Uh, so I don't know if I said, but Avery got her, she got her tonsils out, not because of recurrent infections. She got them out because of really bad sleep apnea because they were enormous for, what is it? Like nine months now. And she was having like a breathing pattern issues and all that. So, um, it's definitely helped there, but I'm like, oh my gosh. And I know it's just a week, so I really shouldn't be basing this off. This will be like a good thing long-term, I think, but it's been it's been rough. So I just wanted to be real about that and let you know that, uh, I know that's not every kid's experience. You know, a lot of people I've talked to, they've been like, oh yeah, it was a really rough couple of days. And then it was great. But Avery's never done anything in like a normal way. So I, I'm not surprised in any way, but that's kind of where we are. Uh, we'll continue to, I'll keep you posted in what'll be like next week's vlog on how it is, or if there's resolution to this, but other, um, so we already talked about, I posted a thing on Instagram to ask like what questions you all had that I could maybe answer since, you know, I'm an expert now yesterday, my video got cut off. So that's why we abruptly ended my battery died. Shocker. But I was going to answer a couple of those real quick. Watch Piper trying to don't you dare climb over the couch. Boop, boop, boop. Look, my boss got Avery and Piper these. They're like marshmallows, these like squishy stuffed animal things. And she loves them. Okay, let's look and see if we can find some questions. Okay, Kristen Robinson said, when do you like to refer for possible tonsillectomy? How many positive streps a year? What are some advantages of tonsillectomies? So the big reasons you usually get your tonsils out is because they're too large and they're causing some sleep apnea or you are getting recurrent strep infections. I would usually send them if they probably, if it was strep infections, probably if they had, I'm sure there's a guideline and I would have to look it up. Oh, I have a doctor's appointment and they're calling me. Hold on. Okay, done triaging for that. This child's going to flip over the couch. I just looked up the indications for recurrent strep because I've never actually had a kid with that in my own practice. And it's seven times a year uh, before you send to ENT. So if they've had more than seven, which is 
a lot or it was more than five for two consecutive years so if each year for two years they had more than five or each year for three years they had more than three so that seems like when they would actually consider a tonsillectomy uh so i don't know i would probably try to get them to go maybe to ent before then just to see but that's just me that doesn't seem like that seems not an evidence-based so don't do that um but that would just make me nervous but seven holy moly seven Pipey, please stop trying to die. But in Avery's case, and I have referred people to ENT for this, if they had like tonsillar hypertrophy, which is when your tonsils are just huge like Avery's were, I usually have them wait a couple of months and then see if it's gonna get better, how bad is it, how much is it affecting their life, and then send them to ENT and just see what they think. You know, do they need a sleep study? Do they need any of this other stuff? But give it a month or two, um, unless you think it's like so bad that, uh, you know, <laughs> they need to have oxygen. So if you feel like that's not happening, seek assistance. Um, someone else asked for coping mechanisms for parents and kids or the Pearson, the Pearson, the, I don't know what accent that, accent that is, but that sounds fun. Or the person themselves. I think with parents go into it, uh, not with my attitude, go into it thinking like, yeah, this is going to be a little bit rough. That way it's not as much of a surprise. Know that post-op, they're gonna be a little bit out of it. It's gonna be rough to watch because they cry a lot, they're screaming, They kids coming out of anesthesia is hard, so just expecting that. Having a lot of different options available to the kids in terms of hydrating and food and all those foods that we talked about earlier, just have a ton of them. And then, um, you know, have someone else like a piper to eat them all when your child eventually decides they don't want it anyway. And then lots of Motrin and Tylenol on board. And just, I think going into it with the attitude of like, this is going to be like a rough week. Whereas I went into it with a mentality of like, this is going to be a rough two or three days. And then if it's short and normal, then yay, you anticipated worse. And if it's what we're doing, you expected it. So um, also if you have someone else like help, we had my aunt and my mom came out and that was, I mean, I don't know how we would have done it without them because they were able to just like, help me and Joe take time to like kind of rotate because it, when you have a very uncomfortable and sick toddler, that can wear on you. Um, just from all the crying and whining like constantly for seven days straight. So I highly recommend if you have anyone who can come into town or just help you, that has been honestly so, so great. And then at the same time, reminding yourself that like you need to have patience with them because they don't feel good, but you also have to have patience with yourself. Like we accomplished nothing all week, absolutely nothing. And that's totally okay. Someone else asked about bleeding. How do you know if they are bleeding uh, and when that would be like an emergency? So the biggest way you would usually um, know they're bleeding, cause she was saying like, if they're not spitting it out, would be they would throw up because blood is a very uh, irritant. Blood is a huge irritant to your stomach and kids, humans just in general, like when you have blood in your gut, you almost always throw up or you can see it in your poop. Your poop would get like black. Um, or so that would be one way would be your poops black, uh, like really black and tarry, or they're, you know, they would throw up and it would kind of look like what you would call coffee ground emesis. Um, so it would kind of be like black specks in some vomit. Hydration by having them drink or having a humidifier in the room helps too, to keep that area moist so it's not going to bleed. And actually the biggest time you are most likely to see bleeding is actually a week out. So kind of where we are now when everything is scabbing and kind of falling off and healing, you're more likely to bleed. But I would say that any real amount of bleeding, I would probably call your uh, surgeon, especially if you're worried about it. That's what I would do. I am not an expert here. So those are kind of the ways to identify it, but I would just call. Yeah. And that's been pretty much our tonsillectomy experience. Yeah. You like seeing yourself. I know. You're chipper, huh? Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to leave them down below if you have other advice. And <laughs> yeah? Uh-huh, cheese. Oh, that's nice. If you have other advice, maybe you work with these kids all the time or you yourself have had them out. I've heard it's really hard as an adult. Ugh. Um, hi. Hi. Then let me know down below as well so that this could be a learning opportunity for a bunch of people. Thanks for hanging in there this week. Like I said, I'll update if we have any other updates at the end of the week, but so far we are. Yeah, that's, I, I, I is pretty much how I feel, Piper. That's right. So thanks for sticking around. Thanks for all your sweet words. And again, for all like the messages and cards and goodies that you guys have sent her. Honestly, it's like been the only thing that makes her smile this week. So you are very appreciated. Hope you have a great rest of your week and I'll see you next time. Bye. Piper, Piper, don't go in that cabinet. Nope.
Thought I'd pop on here and let you know day 10, friends. Day 10 is today and it has been the turnaround day. She's eating uh, just much more herself. So hang in there. If you have a little doing this or you're doing this, day 10, people told me it would be day 10 that would turn around and it is so much better. Not all either yet, but we're doing a lot better. So hang in there, you can do this. Make it to day 10 and you're in the clear. I hope, I really hope. <laughs>